Okay. So today I am with Tanya and I saw the news yesterday about uh, the Siberian part of Russia where they are going to offer people uh, two and a half acres per person or per family to do something with it. It could be tourism, it could be agriculture, it could be something and if they do something productive for five years they will end up getting a permanent residency in Russia. So when I saw that I was excited for uh, thousands of people living in Somalia, who uh, thousands of people living in Kenya who are from Somalia, thousands of people living in Bangladesh who are from uh, uh, Bihar who have been living in these places for 40 years in camps. So they're like slaves. They're in there. I was thinking of people of Rohingyas who are living in Burma in camps where there's nothing and they live there like slaves, like dogs, like really they have no rights or any kind. So I found a ray of hope in this opportunity in Russia and, and I asked Tanya to investigate. Yes, it's hard to live in these difficult part of Russia, but there are human beings living there and they're free. So I thought it would, if I was in their position, and I was living in a camp where I'm not allowed to do anything. I'm like a um, prisoner. I would want my freedom. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's 45 degrees and minus. Because as human beings, we're resilient. We can somehow uh, find a way. And I'm sure not all of that part of Siberia is. I've been to Vladivostok. I've lived in for, there for two months. Uh, I have uh, walked on the frozen ocean. Uh, you know, I've been to men and again that's Siberia. It's also very, very cold. So if if people are living there for, you know, I don't know how long, I'm sure these people from other parts of the world can survive. But that's what I wanted you to investigate and that is why I wanted you to investigate because I'm not thinking about myself, I'm thinking about these people who are sort of, you know, they can't do anything because nobody accepts them. Uh, so that's the idea behind uh, my my comment and request to you to find more about this opportunity. If I mean, if we can open this for these people, they can all move to Russia. Yeah, totally. So what did you find? Right. So uh, the article that you shared stated something about this opportunity being opened to non-citizens of, of Russian Federation. Uh, but I w when I was reading, you know, other articles in Russian, I actually did not, I've, I haven't seen this statement. And the only thing that was closer that I found was that um, this opportunity uh, is open for current citizens of Russia and for people who are uh, repatriates. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. Basically, who are people, right, who uh, used to have uh, Russian citizenship and or can claim Russian citizenship somehow. Like, you know, Israel has a um, very wide repatriate program. Poland, Germany, some of the countries also do. So um, uh, in Russia, such, such a thing apparently also exists. So if people can claim themselves as repatriates uh, to Russia and be willing to return, they can also participate in the program. Um, it, is, uh, it works uh, the following way. So uh, for all the, all the citizens of Russia can apply once in a lifetime for a free hectare of land in Siberia and the Far East. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's not limited per family, it's limited per person. So if you have a family of five, you can actually apply for five hectares of land. Um, you cannot buy or sell it, I think. You can claim ownership of it uh, after a certain amount of years. Mm. And uh, you have to use this land somehow, so you have to build a home on it, you have to, you know, open an agricultural business, so you have to grow certain things on it. And uh, it has to be, that plot of land has to be in 10 kilometers from a closest city. Or if a city is larger than uh, 50,000 people, then 20 kilometers apart. 
away from the closest city. So, you know, it is pretty uh, oh. inhabited land. Um, so, you know, real, I, I must say, I'm not sure if there are roads, but there will definitely be no school or, you know, hospitals of any sort. So it's good for um, agricultural activities. If, you know, the land is arable, if you can actually grow anything of that land, you can do that. Um, I think, you know, that some people who already live in Siberia or on the Far East um, can apply. And if you live in the city, you have already, you know, an apartment or a house. If you live in the city and you have a hectare of land 10 kilometers from where you live, it makes sense. You can do certain things, right? Um, um, Yeah. And also, uh, you know, I'm not an expert in this matters in this matter, right? <laughs> Obviously, so I've just you know, but I I'm a, uh, I'm Russian native, so I you know I can read some articles in Russian, and that's what I did yesterday, and um, I I've read a couple, maybe three interviews with experts who were asked uh, to give their you know opinion on the program, and some of them said that um, well, few, I think all of them were skeptical in actually uh, the economic potential of this program to develop those, you know, um, vast and far away parts of Russia. Um, and, um, a lot of them said that actually land there is quite cheap in general. So a hectare of land, I tried to recalculate that, but I think you can buy, buy a hectare of land for less than, um, for something around, you know, five, six hundred dollars. Uh, per hectare, and, um, you know, just do certain things with it, but few people do. Um, On a similar note, uh, it's slightly different, but on a similar note, uh, I was reading an article in um, Russian Carnegie Center this morning about uh, China planning to move certain of its industrial facilities across the uh, abroad, across the board to, you know, these areas of Russia. And uh, mostly, you know, to uh, areas to the south of the Lake Baikal, because that's where the border is. Um, Yes, and there was, you know, quite a good um, expert uh, assessment of the whole initiative there. And basically, they were saying that they doubt that it's going to happen. And if it is going to happen, you know, with maybe three manufacturing facilities will actually be moved, that will be good for the region. Because in the whole area over there, you know, um, it's just 6 million people. Yeah. And yes, uh, you were right. Um, I mean, my main concern um, when I said that it's cold in your, on your Facebook uh, discussion group, um, my main concern that it's cold, you know, yes, people can live there. And I have relatives who live there. And um, it's, you know, quite harsh weather conditions. So it's very, very hot in the summer, and it's very, very cold in winter. So the, you know, the difference between winter temperatures and summer temperatures can reach, I don't know, 100 degrees Celsius. So it can be plus 45 in summer and minus 45 in winter easily. And, you know, it's Siberia, a lot of mosquitoes and stuff like that. Funny, you know, very welcome package. Uh, but people do live there and uh they have been living there for a long for a long time and yeah you can do that uh if you you know uh learn how to properly dress yourself uh you know that you need to buy certain type of shoes you need you know to like um make sure your house is uh uh what's it called like heat heat proof right um Oh, but I was slightly concerned about, you know, people from warmer areas like Kenya or Pakistan or Somali, right, moving there and being just thrown into the situation, right? Um, it's The weather conditions is totally new for them. The shortage of the summer is totally new for them. And the fact that you have to use this land somehow, so you have, you know, to grow certain things on it or develop, um, I don't know, uh, a manufacturing uh, with a lack of infrastructure, um, right? So you have to know um, at least how to grow things in that climate condition, which is something, you know, people need to learn how to do. Yeah. So the attractive part for the people who are refugees is not necessarily the land or their poor, 
a lot of people will be willing to give them money but the attractive part is the visa an attractive part is yeah. that they're offering a, a citizenship um, um, a few 50 60 years ago England done, did similar stuff and they took a lot of people from Pakistan a whole mm -hmm. area just moved to England uh, 50 oh, I years ago I and they became citizen and now pa Pakistanis are one of the largest uh, population of England uh, if you go to England you will find them everywhere mm -hmm. so um, yeah. so th this is what is more attractive to me because the the world's passport problem or the visa issues are so many that uh, this might give them an opportunity a country is willing to offer you land and passport if you do certain things as I said you know it's it's a good price for freedom um, so that's what I was thinking and you know, Russians are amazing people. I love the place. And, uh, you know, there will be more colors in Russia if that happens. Yeah, of course. I think it's lovely. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically what I wanted to know. So thank you so much, Tanya, for for finding all this information for us and uh, sharing with everyone else. And I hope Absolutely. not a lot of people will bug you more when I post this <laughs> video. But I'm sure a few will. Um, I'd love, you know, too, I, I really love your, um, like, um, friending, friending across, you know, the countries, uh, across, like, our, our tiny bubbles um, uh, initiative. So I would love, you know, to friend more people. Just send me, um, like, a quick... Um, introduction. Uh, introduction, yes, just a quick message. Mm -hmm. Introducing yourself and, you know, telling a little bit about yourself. And I will definitely friend you um, with an introduction. Yeah, totally. Cool. Thank you so much. Lots of love to your Thank daughter you, and Thank lots you. of big kisses and hugs to Fyodor for me. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Best wishes to your family. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.